guys, looks like we found us a limitation to our bandsaw setup. So what would you think of that? I don't know what to make of it. Um, I was standing here, just you know, had it started. I was cutting a piece of metal. And all of a sudden it started doing exactly what you just seen. So I checked the motor and it wasn't hot. I mean, it just barely lukewarm and just any normal motor. Uh, I did check the box, the control box, and yes, it was a little warm too. So I'm wondering if the controller is getting too hot. So that was a pretty long cut. Usually I don't take that long for a cut, but I wanted to give it a good workout on a long, hard cut and see how it would work. So I think I hear coyotes out there hollering. <laughs> anyway, um, so now we got to investigate what's going on there. Uh, I'm gonna try a fan, put a, a 12 volt computer power supply fan up there and mount to the top of the box. I may even be able to find a smaller one with a heat sink. I don't know yet. Um, I do have a heat sink, but trying to find that thing would be next to impossible. Well, I guess I lied. I could, this come off of a video card and it is 12 volt and I'm wondering if that would work because that would that would go right on the box or the controller box so I mean we could try that or we could just try a regular CPU fan or computer fan or something like that because they're all 12 volt and I can get 12 volt to that box this camper's got 12 volt all through it so anyway we're planning on changing the motor on the bandsaw um, looks like we're not done with the bandsaw I don't like that motor it's just too big bulky and heavy and I would like to have a little more extra space so this one's a little smaller and it's a little nicer looking because this is about what color I'm going to make the bandsaw when I'm done. So I do have this paint, black hammered. So I'm going to put this motor on it and hope it works. I'll have to overcome the thread part so I may have to make something and thread it to put on here that's a little bigger than this shaft and then somehow mount this up to the lathe and turn it on and lay that part down I don't know yet and make it the same size as this shaft that way I have a shaft a full shaft and I can put that pulley and everything on it I don't know yet we'll find out um, looks like this is going to be the last video that I do for I don't know how long, so I got one more video coming up, and that's on the 21st, don't tell everybody, and um, that's going to be <laughs> a surprise. <laughs> thought I was going to tell you, didn't you? <laughs> it's nothing fancy. It's just a small, short video coming up on the 21st. So look forward to that video. And I've got 216 more videos or 215 more videos that you can go back and reminisce on the old days when I was fat. So, um, 
I guess we're going to call this a update. And I'll be going in on the hospital on the 20th, which is Monday. Uh, so, God, I hope this don't go too long. I want to get this over with, man. Uh, I hate hospitals. So, you know, me being away from my shop that long, that's going to be awful. <laughs> I mean, without this shop and the stuff that I can do and play with, you know, basically that's what I'm doing, playing. So I guess, uh, unlike M Mini Pearl, I'm not through playing now. <laughs> so, anybody gets that joke? And knows who Mini Pearl is. I wouldn't admit your age. <laughs> anyway, uh, I think that's pretty much it. You know, I did get some stuff. Um, you know what? Since this ain't all that long, I'll go ahead and show you. Went ahead and got me some uh, wire ends, and when I got that stuff, I got this and I didn't show you. Um, I got this on eBay, and it's a heat shrink gun or uh, one of those you can use for lifting paint off the of stuff. You get this attachment, which I haven't even opened yet. Um, actually, I don't think this is the one for paint. It might be. It might be in uh, conjunction with this piece right here for a scraper, I guess. But, yeah, we get, I guess that's a scraper. I'm not sure what that is. I'm, it looks like it might be something where you can concentrate the heat in one area. Uh, then you got this little little piece, and then the one that's on it. Now I got this. I took it out of the package, unboxed it, and oh, there was one more here I didn't show you. got that funky looking thing so anyway I plugged it in and I mean a one hell of a racket happened I don't know what it was maybe something was in the fan and I shut it off immediately I mean it sounded like something hit the fan <laughs> the shit hit the fan that's what happened <laughs> anyway um, I turned it off, turned it back on, worked fine. I've heat shrink a whole bunch of stuff. In fact, I used that whole section there, so I gotta get more of that because that's the most common one I use. So I might just try to get a a big pack of just that size because the rest of them I don't need to keep buying them because I don't hardly use the other sizes. So but anyway, it's been working fine. So I did document it with them and told them what had happened and I'll, I'll keep it. I don't have a problem keeping it. Uh, I'm sure it's something I can fix. Uh, ain't a whole hell of a lot can be wrong with these things except for the fan. But, uh, and the heating element, and usually it wouldn't be that making a noise. It'd be something to do with the motor and the fan. So. That's the heat gun I got. I missed my old one. It was a smaller one, a little more compact. It didn't have a handle. It was just like a pencil type. And I love that thing. And I ended up leaving it where I used to live. I lost a lot of stuff in that move, man. Uh, 
just think this shop is full now. If I had all the stuff I had before I moved here that I ended up losing because of the greedy ass landlord. Uh, ah, that's another another story. <laughs> anyway, looks like we're going to have to uh, continue monitoring the uh, bandsaw until I get it ironed out. I'm not going to start on this drill press until I know that bandsaw is right. And once that bandsaw is right, then I know that the drill press is going to be done right. Uh, I do know that I'm going to use this box that came on it. I don't know if you guys can see that. Yeah, this box that, that I took off of the top, I can mount that to the wall back there right beside the switch and I can mount that right there because all this will come back out and then I can mount it right here that way this is not up here in the way of this light underneath here and I can take that down I don't need that no more once I get my shit together on the bandsaw. But I can take this box, clean it up, and it will match the drill press because it did come off of the drill press. And it opens like a door, so I could just mount it to the wall and mount all my parts in it. And then on the front side of it, put all my controls and, and stuff like that on it. Switch, control, uh, whatever. So, that's the plan. That doesn't mean that that's what's going to happen. You guys just going to have to watch and see how I surprise you. I might surprise myself. I do that a lot. But anyway, I just seen something else that I thought maybe I'd like to share. On these pulleys that screws onto the motors, I think I figured out a way that we wouldn't have to worry about the pulley coming off of it if you was to run it backwards. Uh, basically, I was thinking that we could take and thread or drill a hole right in, in here. Now, I'm, I'm thinking right now, well, that's why I'm slowing down. You hear it? You, you hear them wheels are turning up there? Uh, I can turn this down to where it's flat, tap or drill it and tap it in the center for a set screw, and then I can put my pulley on top of it. Of course, it would have to be a specially made pulley with a big shank to fit over top of this. So, you know, I, I think I'm going to start getting me a practice on making pulleys to fit these treadmill motor pulleys. The only thing that the person would have to do would be to turn it down. Now, if I was to make up these to sell, you know, that'd be a different story. Then I could take and make the pulley and this as one unit and sell it as a pulley upgrade for the treadmill motor. I'm working towards something here. I don't know what I'm working towards. Uh, you know, i got to make some money somewhere. And people are using these treadmill motors for upgrading their tools. And it's a great idea. There's just limitations to it that we've got to overcome. So right now, I, I guess we're still in experimental mode with the, the uh, bandsaw. And that poor bandsaw is really getting a workout too because I'm taking it apart, putting it back together. Taking it apart, putting it back together. Now I'm down to where all I have to do is focus on the motor and controller for figuring out what's going to make them happy with each other. Now this motor here is a 1.5 horsepower motor continuous. Altogether it's a 2.65 horsepower motor but continuous it's a hundred or 1.5 horsepower at 95 volts DC. Now the motor I've got on there is a 90 volt. So it's not going to hurt me to go up 95 volts because 
remember we've got 110 volt in the controller so I'm not sure how that works when you go AC in 110 volts alternating current and then you have out going which is also alternating current coming out into the rectifier I'm wondering if it doesn't change the volts but it changes it from AC to direct current I'm still a little hazy about some of that stuff but I'm getting there uh, uh, I'm, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel <laughs> so it's just finding that perfect combination and I thought I found it but when it did what you guys seen here at the beginning of this video uh, that ain't gonna work uh, I need to know that this thing's gonna be able to do a heavy job and do it efficiently to the end with no problems so it looks like my bandsaw is going to get a workout so Anyway, I'm going to get off of here. Wish me luck, guys, at the hospital. Um, I'm working on the laptop. I think I've got it fixed. Um, I've got all my camera stuff ready and packed. Got the laptop all ready and getting ready to pack it when I get ready to leave. Got my clothes packed, sweatpants, you know, nine yards. And... Um, I'll be damned, man. Somebody gets me every time. Just when you think you ain't getting any text, somebody texts you. Anyway, you guys have a good one. Later. Oh, and I've even made a special tripod for the hospital. <laughs> Got another one. You guys are sitting on the taller one. So, this comes apart. This comes off. I got a wing nut here. This pipe comes out. This will all fit in my bag. You guys have a good one. Later. Tater.